In the final video for this week, I want to do a couple of calculations to show the subtleties of setting up integrals over arbitrary sets. I'll start by integrating the scalar field f of x over xy over a triangle in R2 with vertices 0, 0, 4, 5, and 6, 2. Here is that triangle. Since I'm going to need equations for the bounds of the edges of the triangle, I've also calculated the equations of the lines that match each side of the triangle shown here. I haven't shown the details of those calculations, but each of these lines is a line through two points, um, two of the three vertices of the triangle, and I can always calculate the equation of a line given two points. I want to choose the order of integration and then figure out the bounds for the inner variable. I'm going to try to set it up with x as the outside variable and y as the inside. However, I immediately notice a problem. I can let x go from 0 to 6, and the lower bound for y will be x over 3, but the upper bound is different for different parts of the triangle. If I made y the outside variable, this same problem would arise, so that switch doesn't actually help here at all. What I have to do here is I have to do this in two pieces. One for x from 0 to 4, and one for x from 4 to 6. In the first, y equals 5x over 4 will be the upper bound, and for the second, y equals negative 3x over 2 plus 11 will be the upper bound. Let me do the first of those integrals first. So for this piece, x goes from 0 to 4, and y from x over 3 to 5x over 4. The two lines that formed the first half of the integral. The integral then is not too difficult. I integrate in y to get y squared over x, treating x as a constant. Then I integrate on the bounds, squaring both and subtracting. And finally, I multiply x over 2 in and simplify to common denominator. Then I do the x integral and evaluate from 0 to 4 and get the final result for this piece of the total integral. That is a measure of the volume over the left part of the triangle. Now I want the volume over the right part. The lower bound is still x over 3, but the upper bound is negative 3x over 2 plus 11. Here is the setup for that second piece. x now goes from 4 to 6, and y between the bounds that I just described. I integrate in y again to get y squared over 2, and then evaluate on the bounds. The algebra here is a bit more difficult since I have to square a binomial, but I do so, multiply the x over 2 in, and get a new polynomial. Then I integrate this polynomial in x and evaluate on the bounds, not showing all the arithmetic to get the second value. Then the integral is the sum of the two values, which produces this final result for the volume over the triangle of this particular function. Something to note here. Remember a few videos ago that I said that I could just integrate over the interior points and not worry about the boundary points? I'm actually implicitly using that here. In this integral, the dividing line, the line at x equals 4 that split the triangle, was part of both integrals. It was counted twice. The result that the boundaries don't affect the integral is necessary to do this process of breaking up the integral into pieces to make sure that the double counting of boundary points doesn't affect the value of the integral. I really do need that little result, that little observation, to make this all make sense. Here is another region that I want to integrate over. How do I set up this integral? Well, here I'm going to use three regions, two triangles and then a half circle. For the first triangle, like I did in the previous video, I can integrate from 0 to 1 in x, and then from 0 to y equals x in y. For the second triangle, I can integrate from 1 to 2 in, in y. The lower line is y equals x minus 1, and the top line is y equals 1, so the y bounds are x minus 1 to 1. Finally, for the half circle, the x bounds are 1 to 3, and the y bounds are y equals 1 up to the arc of the top of the circle. This is an offset circle, and it has equation x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1, and if I solve for y, taking the positive square root because I want the upper arc of the circle, I get that y equals 1 plus square root 1 minus x minus 2 squared. That will be the upper bound. If the function I want to integrate is f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared, then I get these three integrals. Between these three integrals, I can integrate over the entire shape. So let me do the three calculations. For the first integral, I integrate in y, evaluate on the bounds from 0 to x, get a polynomial in x, simplify, then integrate in x and evaluate from 0 to 1 to get a value of 1 third. 
For the second integral, the half circle, I again integrate first in y and then evaluate on the bounds. The bounds here are complicated, and I've split them into two integrals, one for the top bound and one for the bottom. The second negative piece is a pretty simple polynomial integral and results in negative 28 over 3. The first, however, is a real beast. It involves a substitution u equals x minus 2 and then a complicated trig substitution. If you want to see it, I've shown all the algebra in the notes, but I'll skip over it for here. The result of the first integral is 32 over 3 plus 21 pi over 4. And the result of the whole second port part is the distance, is the difference between these two things, which is 4 thirds plus 21 pi over 4. The third piece is, this, is the other triangle with these bounds, and I integrate in y and then evaluate on the bounds. And here I have to cube out a binomial, which again is annoying, but I do so, and I simplify the polynomial to get a normal x integral. And I've not shown all the, the arithmetic here, but the result is 7, 6. And then the total integral is the sum of all three pieces, which works out to 17 over 6 plus 21 pi over 4. That's the volume of the function integrated over that whole region that I had to split into three pieces to understand.